A cordial greeting. Today is Monday, September 22, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video I will be giving an update on the forecast of the impressive Hurricane Gabriel, which has strengthened into a Category 4 hurricane and is projected to continue moving east until eventually moving over or very near the Azores Islands. And in the second part of the video, I will give an update on the two strong tropical waves that we are monitoring located east of the Caribbean. The first, which maintains a medium probability of cyclonic development, should be passing over the northern Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico between Wednesday and Thursday, and by the end of this week moving very near or over the Bahamas, where it is important to continue monitoring its evolution. In addition, in the long term it could pass near North Carolina or South Carolina. So interests along the east coast of the United States should also pay attention to the evolution of this first tropical wave. And the next tropical wave, which is farther east, already has a high probability of cyclonic development and is projected to form into a tropical depression and tropical storm Humberto as it moves away to the northeast of the Caribbean. It is possible that this tropical wave could have a track and intensity very similar to that of Hurricane Gabriel, which is why it is important that interests in Bermuda begin to monitor the evolution of this next tropical cyclone. But let's zoom in on the infrared satellite animation of the powerful hurricane, which already has maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour, making it a Category 4 hurricane. And this means that the two hurricanes we have had this year have managed to become major hurricanes. Fortunately, it is already at its closest point to the island of Bermuda, where the effects are minimal, except for strong swells affecting the eastern coasts of the island. Other than that, Rain and wind associated with this tropical cyclone will remain over the Atlantic waters until eventually moving over the Azores. And we should not be surprised at the rate of intensification of Hurricane Gabriel since it is moving over an area where ocean surface temperatures are 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above normal. And it is definitely quite impressive that the tropical cyclones that have formed this year have concentrated in the subtropical Atlantic. But again, this is due to the fact that the highest sea surface temperature anomalies are found in this zone. In addition, Remember that the tropical Atlantic has been influenced by dry and stable air, which fortunately has allowed these tropical cyclones to strengthen once they move north over the open waters of the North Atlantic. We continue with the good news that only two weak tropical storms have affected land areas, while the two major hurricanes that have formed this year have remained over Atlantic waters, although this could change in the coming days when Hurricane Gabriel approaches or passes over the Azores. In fact, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center projects that it will remain a major hurricane until Wednesday morning, that is, for a period of approximately 48 hours, and starting Wednesday it should begin to weaken, but it is projected to pass as a Category 1 hurricane over the Azores during Thursday afternoon or evening. It is very likely that a hurricane watch will be issued for the islands in the coming days. And with the contribution of accumulated cyclone energy left by Hurricane Gabriel, it is likely that we will approach what would be considered normal in terms of accumulated cyclone energy after a long period from late August to mid-September in which we had no tropical cyclone development in the Atlantic, and it seems that Gabriel will not be the only cyclone to form in September. There is the possibility that we could see the formation of two additional cyclones, which if they form would be called Tropical Storm Humberto and Tropical Storm Imelda. These two tropical waves continue to generate disorganized convection, so they are still far from being a tropical depression. And see that in the latest tropical outlook, the National Hurricane Center has increased to 50% the probability of development of the first tropical wave when it is located north of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and very near the Bahamas, while the probability of development of the second tropical wave has increased to 30% in the next 48 hours, and to 80% during the next 7 days. So everything seems to indicate that this tropical wave will be Tropical Storm Humberto, and the one closer to the Antilles by the end of this week could develop into Tropical Storm Imelda. Let's talk then about the possible tracks. The first tropical wave is of interest to the northeastern Caribbean because it will bring heavy downpours and eventually be of interest to the Bahamas and the eastern United States, while the second tropical wave is of interest to Bermuda. If we look at the track projections of the European model, you can see that the vast majority of members develop a tropical storm and hurricane associated with the tropical wave farther east. And you can see that the most likely scenario is a track very near or over the island of Bermuda in about 7 to 8 days. Meanwhile, the first tropical wave, the one near the Caribbean, is developed by some members into a tropical depression or tropical storm passing just east of the Bahamas and eventually taking a track parallel to the east coast of the United States. For now, most members keep it as a tropical storm. On the other hand, we have the projection of the American model. In this case, many members also develop the first tropical wave east and northeast of the Bahamas. And unlike the European model, few of them develop the second tropical wave, which has an 80% probability of cyclonic development. And the members of Google's artificial intelligence model, 
All of them develop Tropical Storm Humberto associated with the wave that has an 80% probability of development, and in fact, the vast majority show a major hurricane approaching or passing over Bermuda in about 7 to 8 days, while most of the members develop a tropical depression or tropical storm associated with the first tropical wave very near or over the Bahamas. And in this case, the members of Google's artificial intelligence model have different scenarios, from a track toward the state of Florida to tracks farther east and eventually approaching North Carolina. Now let's look at the projections of the global models. Let's start with the American model. It has the first tropical wave passing just north of the Antilles, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic between Tuesday and Thursday. And it is not until Friday that it begins to develop a tropical depression just north of the Turks and Caicos Islands. In the midday run, it projects a tropical storm approaching or making landfall along the coasts of North Carolina in about six to seven days. And interestingly, it does not develop the second tropical wave despite it being the one with the highest probability of development according to the National Hurricane Center. On the other hand, we have the projection of the European model, the first tropical wave passing over Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands during Tuesday night and the second tropical wave gaining latitude and heading toward Bermuda. In this case, the European model does develop the second tropical wave into a tropical storm between Thursday and Friday, and during the weekend, also develops a tropical depression associated with the first tropical wave, and in about eight days has a weak tropical storm moving over North Carolina while strengthening the other cyclone into a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane. The German model also sees the development of both tropical waves. In about five days it shows two tropical storms associated with these two disturbances. Meanwhile, the European artificial intelligence model also shows the development of the second tropical wave approaching Bermuda in about seven to eight days. In reality there is still some uncertainty. We do not know exactly if both tropical waves will develop into tropical cyclones, but what we do know is that the Bahamas and the eastern United States should pay attention to the first tropical wave, while Bermuda should pay attention to the second tropical wave. For now, what we do know is that on Tuesday and Wednesday it should rain quite heavily in the northern half of the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico, and between Wednesday and Thursday in the Dominican Republic. If we look at the latest rainfall accumulation projections, the American model projects that for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands between 2 to 4 inches of rain may fall, and some sectors could accumulate up to 7 inches, as well as some of the northern Leeward Islands. Meanwhile, for the Dominican Republic accumulations between 50 to 75 millimeters are projected, particularly between Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Well, that's all for the cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. Here at Hurricane Info I will continue monitoring Hurricane Gabriel closely as well as the two tropical waves that have probabilities of cyclonic development. And before I go, I wanted to ask you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent day. Until tomorrow.